Hello and Namaskar. Welcome to another session of BW Farhana Tidbits, where I share some of my knowledge and experience. My name is Deban Shumukherji, and today we are going to discuss Optimize Join in SAP HANA. Optimize Join property for the joins in SAP HANA helps in improving the performance and the number of records reduction. Today we will see the inner workings of Optimize Join and how we can utilize in the real world scenario. So without any further ado, let's get started. Alright, so now let's look at the Optimize Join workings and details. So first let's set the context and the purpose of Optimize Join in SAP HANA. Optimize Join properties purpose is to basically reduce the number of records at an early stage of processing in the HANA CV and thus improve the performance and number of records for the further calculations. So let's keep that in mind. That is the purpose of optimized join. Now let me burst some misconceptions. It is you. It is thought by some people or some consultants that when you choose optimized join, you are basically doing join pruning, meaning you are skipping the join if the records or if the fields rather are not requested from the right side of the join. That is not true. Meaning it does not matter whether the optimized join property is set or not. If there is a join, say for example, a left outer join and you are not requesting any fields from the right side, the join will anyways be pruned. By default, the join will not be executed whether you have selected the optimized join property or not. So please keep that in mind that the purpose of optimized join is not to do join pruning okay so even though the join is not executed the field on which the join is defined by default will be requested will be requested keep that in mind during query processing meaning if there is a this uh, regular left outer join without the optimized join property and you have not requested any fields from the right side Definitely the join will be skipped. That's fine. We all know that but the field on which that join is defined that field will be included in the query processing meaning to be precise in the group by clause. So if there is an aggregation which is happening before the join and the group by clause by default if you see you will observe that the column which is used in the join is included in the group by that is the default behavior and this default behavior basically guarantees consistent aggregation behavior in sap hana joins okay so independent of the fields which are requested in the select clause of the query or not the field which is used in the join is included in the group by clause you can avoid this default behavior now that's where the optimized join comes into picture. You can avoid this default behavior by using this optimized join property. Meaning if you set this property to true, then the join is definitely pruned. That's for sure we know that it's not dependent on this property. But now the join field will not be included in the group by clause of the aggregation. And that will reduce the number of records and definitely the consequently the performance as well so that is the main purpose of optimized join it removes the join field from the group by clause and it overrides the default behavior the default behavior what is it the default behavior is that the join field is included in the group by clause in the aggregations happening okay before the join and we will see that an example with an example so what are the prerequisites and restrictions for optimized join to work? Optimized join always works with left outer joins, text joins, right outer joins or referential joins. It does not work with inner join, of course, which is very obvious. Why? Because inner join anyways has to be executed whether you request the fields from the right side or not because inner join does filtering. If the field uh, or the data does not exist on both the sides then the data has to be filtered so definitely it impacts the result set it impacts the number of records so join has to be executed anyways inner join so optimized join does not apply there another condition is that the cardinality of the join 
should be either 1 is to 1 or n is to 1 because only with these cardinalities you are making sure that whether the join executes or not the result set the granularity of result set the number of records in the result set are not changing then the second condition is the join field is not requested in the query if the join field is requested in the query then definitely that join is included in the group by and it is executed only fields from one join partner are requested that means if you request joins from the right side as well then of course the optimized join does not apply and finally the cardinality has to be set to either 1 is to 1 or n is to 1 and then we also have to make sure that the joins are equi joins not non equi joins what are equi joins equi joins are equal to the non equi joins are between greater than less than etc so if the join condition has the non equi join conditions then optimized join will not apply so let's look at that with an example now all right so now let's look at one example and that will clarify things so i have used a couple of tables for this example so let's look at the data to understand this better so i have two tables one is the sales items where I have the item number, we have the employee and we have the amount. So I have repeated Donald. So first item was sold by Donald and the amount was 10. And the second item was also sold by Donald and the amount was 50. Then we have third item by Max 40 and fourth item by John 21. On the right side, you can see the second table, which is the items master data table, where we have the item number and the description for the item. So here, we have a very simple CV design and I would like to explain this. So I have the first node as an aggregation node and that aggregation node has item, employee and amount from the sales item. So I have all the three rare, uh, fields here, item, employee and amount. And then the aggregation of the amount field is set to max aggregation. So please remember we have item, employee and amount and the aggregation is set to max. Then we have a projection node where we have added the items master data table, meaning this table where we have item number and description, which is now joint. And if the, you see the details of the join, the join is on the item field because item is the common field, but item is not chosen. That means item is not included in the CV output. So what is included? We have the employee and we have the amount here. And then you can see the join type is left outer join. The cardinality is n is to 1, which is the required cardinality. So allowed cardinalities are 1 is to 1 or n is to 1. So here we are using n is to 1. And then the optimized join is set to true. And then we have the aggregation node and the semantics node. And in the semantics, the aggregation, the final aggregation of amount is set to sum. So the important thing to note here is in the first aggregation, it is set to max and in the second aggregation it is set to sum and then we have the join which is a simple join but optimized join is true now if you execute it okay we will see that for a moment i'm just skipping this part we'll come to that now if i execute the cv without optimized join you will see that the donald will have amount 60 why 60 because we have donald 10 donald 50 and the join is done and then it is the max but max as of uh, uh, with respect to item and employee okay so it is taking 10 and then it is also getting 50 so two rows are being uh, returned from this aggregation meaning if you see the aggregation we have group by clause which is grouping based on not just the sales item employee field but sales item item field and the aggregation is max meaning that there are two records which are returned by this aggregation node for donald and why two records because the group by includes the employee and the item if it is without the optimized join and that's why the final result is coming as 60 donald 60 max 40 and john 21 but now if you execute this with optimized join 
then the group by clause immediately removes the item field and the group by now for the first aggregation is set to max but items employee is there but sales items item field is skipped that means that only one record will be returned from the first aggregation which will be donald 50 because item is not taken into consideration for the group by now it's only based on employee and maximum only based on employee for donald is 50 so 50 is being returned here so now we have three records coming from the aggregation node donald 50 max 40 john 21 and then there is no second aggregation happening here. Why there is no second aggregation? Because these are unique three records. They don't need to be aggregated again based on employee because they're already unique based on employee. So that's why there is no aggregation node. Whereas in this case, there were two records returned from Donald. So a further aggregation was uh, executed and that further aggregation executed and it summed up 50 plus 10 and that's how the Donald became 60. So that's why there are two aggregations. But here, no second aggregation was required because the records are already unique with respect to the employee. So you see here, what happened? The optimized join removed the item from the group by and that resulted in less number of records because if you remove the fields from group by, definitely the records will reduce and therefore, the performance will improve but here you have to also keep in mind that the amount is changing why it is changing because we had the aggregation of maximum had we had the aggregation of sum it would not matter the values would not have been impacted but the number of records would reduce in that case and if the number of records reduce then the performance will automatically improve now this is a very simple cv for demonstration purposes but in real world you will have very complex cv where you have loads of joins loads of aggregations loads of unions calculated key figures one cv on top of the other then on top of that another cv then on top of that another cv so there will be a hierarchy of cvs in those cases if you set the optimized join and if you make sure that the aggregation is not dependent on the granularity here maximum aggregation was dependent on the granularity so when the granularity changed the value changed but if your aggregation is not dependent on the granularity then very safely and easily you can choose optimize join which will reduce the number of records and how the group by clause will now not include the join field if the uh, fields from the right side are not requested say for example in your cv we have 100 fields right but the report or the user is only selecting 20 fields now all those 80 fields will have a lot of fields which are coming from the right side so if you're not requesting from the right side why unnecessary you want to add those records in the group by so if you exclude that joint field from the group by clause automatically your number of records will decrease same thing you can see in the plan visualization. So this was the explain plan and this is the execution of the plan. Here also you will see that we have without the optimized join in the columns it is employee and item. Both are taken in group by. Whereas with optimized join only employee was taken. Okay. So what are the observations? Let's quickly summarize the observations. We can see that the join pruning happened in both the cases. So please don't think that join pruning is the sole purpose of optimized join that's not true as you can see there is no join node so there is no there is no join happening in both the cases so both are doing the join pruning okay so that is clear now an example now if i go back here if the join would have been executed you can see that we will have something called index join okay if the join is executed then you will have index join here and the operator will be clearly shown but in our case none of the cases without optimize or with optimize we didn't have the join operator so definitely join is pruned in both the cases however in case of with optimization the item field was not included in the group by in the first aggregation thus reducing the granularity of number of records and the reason there are two aggregation 
in without optimization i'm talking about these two aggregations because first aggregation was for the max and the second aggregation was for the sum some had to be executed because there were two records for donald here some did not have to be executed because there was one record only for donald all right so that is an example which will clearly prove to you that optimize join will reduce the number of records and will improve the performance now let's quickly see some salient points and some things you have to keep in mind when using optimize join okay now finally let's look at some salient points which you have to keep in mind while using the optimize join so having a wrong cardinality setting might lead to wrong results does not mean that the join is not working of course the optimizer is working well it just trusts your cardinality and works around accordingly okay so the idea is to that join pruning should not affect the results if your cardinality is wrong and the join pruning does result or uh, does result in the number of records being different then their values can be different so please take care of the cardinality the second thing is that the optimized join column flags will do whatever is requested it will change the aggregation level by excluding the join column in the group by so whether the join column can be excluded depends also on the queried fields this means whether the join column is included in the aggregation level varies with the fields that are requested by the query then if the filters are defined on join columns for which you have enabled the optimized join property then the join optimizer cannot remove attributes of static filter that means that you can uh, not have join optimization if you have filters then what do you do in that case you can optimize the join column by introducing a dummy projection view node between the join node and the input node which is the input to the join with static filters and what is the business use case of this particular feature well uh example of a situation where this is really helpful is that uh when you have fields only requesting requested in the query mostly from one side of the join and the cardinality to the other partner is set to 1 and it is not an inner join these are the preconditions so if the preconditions are met in such situations the execution of join does not influence the result and therefore the join field can be removed from the group by clause because remember the default behavior even though you have not requested the join field in the query the default behavior is that will be included in the group by which will cause the results to increase so basically this flag helps to explicitly state to the join optimizer that please don't include this field in the aggregations in the group by meaning reduce the number of records very early in the stage which will improve the overall performance but make sure that the aggregation should not be dependent on the granularity as we saw with the max it did depend so as long as it does not depend you can safely uh, and you know efficiently use this optimize join column thank you very much for listening i hope this clarified the optimize join column functionality in sap hana for you uh, we did not do this in the system uh, uh, but if you do want to see this in action in real system with a real scenario how it works and if you want to uh, see how the explain plan is generated how the visualization plan is generated in plan ways then please um, uh, join my training in bw for hana which also covers the native hana and there we will cover the optimize join thank you very much and i'll see you in the next one